What is up, Janksters? It's your boy Graham, also known as HamHawks42 on the internet, and today we have a very interesting deck that is celebrating Dominaria United Standard. That's right, we're here, rotation has happened, it's upon us, and this is our first deck of the new format, so let's give it a shot. And naturally, I wanted to build around one of the biggest, craziest cards that they've included in Dominaria United, and that is Joda the Unifier. This is a 5-5 wizard for five in all five colors. Legendary creatures you control plus X plus X, where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. So Joda immediately just by himself gives himself a 1-1. One, one. So base level on this thing, it's a 6-6. Six, six. But wait, there's more. Whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a legendary non-land card with lesser mana value. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this is a legendary cascade. There is a ton of incredibly cool things you can do with this, and I am very much looking forward to getting into the deck walking you through how I decided to build it and then taking it out into the ladder, our nice fresh ladder, and seeing what we can do. So thank you so much. Before we get into the deck tech it itself, I do want to give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to my patrons. So huge shout outs to specifically to my mythic patrons, Angry Jellyfish, LC89, and Silent Labber. Thank you so much for helping me keep the lights on and supporting what I do. I really appreciate it. And you, dear viewer, can actually have your name presented here for as little as $1 a month over on Patreon. There's a link in the description. Thank you for considering it. And also, if you have a deck idea and you really want to see me do a deck tech on it here on YouTube, that is a perk that is available at the $10 level. So you can challenge me to build a deck for you or you can supply a deck list and I will actually go through it, give you a proper credit, of course, and you will have a deck tech of your very own. That is available for at the $10 a month level, the mythic patron level. Anyway, thank you very much. And let's get into the deck tech. All right, so here's the deck. We got a couple key pieces. Naturally, we have Joda and I wanted to have four copies of Joda because Joda's the point. At the end of the day, the whole thing is keyed around getting Joda online. The other thing that we need to do with this deck is have a ton of mana available. That is very important. So, of course, we have Timeless Lotus in here. Um, <clears throat> also, one little warning. This deck is not super easy to craft because of the sheer number of mythics. Like We have seven mythics right here. Sorry about that. Um, is what it is i'm sorry um uh, but we have J timeless lotus and joda because we have timeless lotus of course we have teferi who slows the sunset that plus one being able to untap a land as well as the lotus itself then just reloading a huge amount of our mana is fantastic i'm a big old fan so we definitely want that available to us also another neat thing with joda's ability if we draw an additional timeless lotus late in the game the idea of drawing a five drop mana rock when you're in top deck mode late in the game usually is a dead card. However, it does trigger Joda's cascade effect and it is a five mana legendary. So it actually can cascade into any other legend in our deck potentially of which there are a few. We have Rotadrabic of Urborg. This is an amazing zombie wizard. Other zombies you control have vigilance. Whenever another legendary creature you control dies, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary and it's a 2-2 black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. This reads like a freaking commander card. So if you have Rotadrabic down and you have a Jota down and you cast a second Jota, you get a Cascade Trigger uh, off of casting Jota. One hits the battlefield. You have to sacrifice one to the legend rule. Okay, it dies. It then comes back as a token. Then... For every legendary spell you cast for the rest of the game, you get two cascade triggers. I mean, that's incredible. So, and that's just one example. All of the legends can combine in really crazy, crazy ways like that. And that, because we have Rotadrabic, is why we do not have Mirror Box in here. You might think that that makes a lot of sense in a deck like this, and maybe it could, but I think Rotadrabic is better. And being able to leverage the legend rule to effectively be our sack outlet for our legends i think is actually pretty cool so we also have urtai resurrected this is a drown in the lock on a frilled mystic in demir colors and if you're wondering what the hell does that mean that is it is a flash three two legendary phyrexian human wizard for four when it enters the battlefield choose up to one you don't have to choose any 
counter target spell activated ability or triggered ability its controller draws a card then destroy another target creature or planeswalker it controller its controller draws a card if my opponent has a titan of industry or you know some other very large threat even like a fable of the mirror breaker um you know reflection of kiki jiki something like that on the battlefield that is going to take over the game i am more than happy to blow that thing up and let them draw a card i am perfectly fine with that all day every day and urtai gives us that it's also a flash legend that can trigger our joda cascades so that's very useful as well the card is shockingly good i think urtai resurrected is a really good card i know a lot of people are boohooing this because it allows your opponent to draw a card i, I think it's worth it i think the juice is worth the squeeze on this one it's worth the uh, the downside um, we also have Path of Peril just to clean up pesky aggro threats early and then also wipe, potentially wipe the board if we, if you know, late in the game if we have to. Um, all right, other legends. We also have Rafine, Scheming Seer. Rafine is amazing. This card is great. This is another mythic from Streets of New Capenna. If you're in Esper and you have creatures on the board, Rafine gives you exactly what you want. The Connive X upon attack is a big freaking deal. And Rafine is a three drop legendary creature that also happens to be in the primary colors of the deck. That is another thing you will notice. In Joda is a five color creature. Yes. However, we did commit to Esper for the rest of the deck. The only green and red pips you will see in the entire thing is on Joda himself. That is intentional. That's because, well, we need our mana base to kind of fit. We need to be able to build a mana base that'll actually work. Um, and so that that's important. Um, and as, as a result, Rafine just fits like an absolute glove. If we cascade into Rafine late in the game, we then get the Kanai X on our attack. It's the amount of value that we're able to generate is exceptional. Speaking of awesome value, we also have Ellis Ilcor Sadistic Pilgrim. This is a 2 2 Phyrexian Core Cleric for white, black, with Death Touch, already worth the price of admission, frankly. And add Uncommon to boot? Let's go. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Okay. Whenever another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. And this is a Legendary 2, so a good Cascade target. It does the thing. This is a creature that helps kind of apply a little bit of pressure to our opponent. It creates a... It, it puts a Death Touch body on board, which is very relevant. Can be a great blocker. And if we have Rechadra big down... When Ellis dies, we get another one as a as a you know token copy, um, and we can potentially get those effects multiple times. Like good card, good card. Um, it, it does what we want in, in this deck. And then speaking of doing things we want, Reality Chip. Reality Chip is awesome. This is a legendary creature for one in a blue. It is a zero four equipment jellyfish. If you reconfigure it on a creature, you will be able to cast cards from the top of your library. As you can imagine, that is really freaking cool. It is very potent. However, there is one major downside to that in this deck specifically. Casting a card off the top of your library does not trigger Joda. Uh, because with Joda, you have to have cast it from your hand. So that is a little downside. Just be aware of that. All told, given how much mana we're going to be generating between Timeless Lotus to Fairy Who Slows the Sunset, as well as a card we haven't talked about yet, but we're getting to in Relic of Legends, we're going to be able to create an obscene amount of mana. So being able to rip spells off the top of our library could just give us the value that we need to really take advantage of all that mana that we have lying around um, and keep us moving forward and creating the big value bomb that is going to win us this game. Because that's the thing. This deck... When it goes off, it will put 20 mana, 30 mana worth of stuff onto the battlefield in one go. It is shocking to watch, and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. It's super fun. Relic of Legends is a big part of that. It is an artifact for three that taps to add one mana of any color. Okay, it's the uncommon three mana, any color mana rock in the set. Every set they've printed for like the last three years has had some three drop mana rock so what makes this one special it's secondary ability tap an untapped legendary creature you control add one mana of any color that is awesome because joda is potentially putting multiple bodies on the board for us and we can tap each one of those for mana 
even the turn they enter the battlefield. Because this is not a tap ability that is on the creature, you can tap them if they have summoning sickness. So this allows you to kind of cascade and chain off, which is awesome. And on top of that, it turns our creatures into mana dorks effectively that we can untap with Teferi Who Souls of Sunset. So if we have a Relic of Legends on board, it we can, we can with the Teferi down, even if it's just Relic of Legends, we can tap the creature, we can tap the Relic, we can tap one of our lands. We uptick Teferi, untap all of those. We now have mana, we have access to six mana off of those effects. That could be a uh, Cleave Path of Peril if we need it. That could be a Jota, a Timeless Lotus. I mean, needless to say, or we could just chain off with multiple legends and create some really cool effects. So the synergies are here. It, it's good stuff. Other cards that we have that I want to touch on, because I want to touch on all the cards, it's just what I do with these deck tags. Uh, we have Cutdown. Cutdown is the new Fatal Push in Standard. It is a one mana instant, destroy target creature with total power and toughness five or less. So we can only kill small things, but man, your opponent's three twos and two threes are getting wrecked by this, and it feels awesome. So this is in here specifically to help mitigate some early pressure. That is the main goal. As you can imagine, it, does, it doesn't combo with our with our engine it's just here there to prevent a little bit of life loss in the early game to help kind of well keep us around for the late game and that's also another great thing about our two drops by the way reality ship in addition to being a powerful late game card advantage engine it also has four toughness at uh, two mana so it just puts a big old jellyfish butt on the field that can block for you that's nice and Ellis Ilcor, it has death touch so your opponent's not going to want to attach into that attack into that either even if you haven't set it up so pretty good stuff. As far as the mana base goes, I do want to touch on this because five color mana bases are goofy and weird. Again, kind of why we leaned into Esper, which is why I'm even calling this deck Esper Jota. One of the key cards, so obviously because we have Esper, we have Rafine's Tower. It makes sense. Also, they added animations to these recently, which I really appreciate. Thank you, Wizards. Um, also, we have the Plaza of Heroes. Plaza of Heroes is a new land from Dominary United that I think is excellent. Not just kind of good. This, this card is excellent it is mana of any color to cast a legendary spell of which we have tons and then if we have a legendary permanent on the battlefield that is a color it can just give us that color to do with whatever we want and if we have it and three other mana lying around which this deck will a lot of the time we can use it to give a legendary creature hexproof and indestructible if our opponent is trying to get saucy and trying to take joda out uh we can just say no on our mana like on our lands, like it feels great. I think that is excellent. So right now, this is a best of one build. I do not have a sideboard guide, or I, I have not built a sideboard for it yet. I would love your feedback on that. If you can think of sideboard cards that would fit. Right now, building a sideboard is actually really tricky because the meta hasn't shaken out yet. So it's tough to know what you need to hose. But uh, it'll be very interesting to see if, you know, to see how things shake out. And uh, yeah, I mean, thinking other cards that might fit in here, like Karn Silex might work because it's basically like a Meat Hook Massacre that's just like sitting on the board that you can trigger at any time. That might be relevant. Um, there might be some other some other options that can actually fit in this style of deck quite nicely. But this is kind of the first draft and I'm enjoying it a lot right now. So let's jump out into the ladder. Again, huge thank you to my patrons. Thank you so much. And thank you, dear viewers, for getting through my long-winded rambly deck techs. It's kind of... I'm long-winded and rambly. It's what I do. But let's get into some gameplay so I can ramble over my plays to let you know what I'm doing there. And we can see this thing in action. So let's go. Um, This is very tricky. With Rafine's Tower on one into Artakar Waste, we can hit Ellis on two. If we get a third land in our first three draws, we'll have access to Relic of Legends and then be able to hit Rattadra back on time or potentially wipe the board if we have to. I think this is a keeper. I generally avoid keeping two land hands because it rarely works out on Arena, but we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna see what happens. And we're going up against some form of red aggressive deck. Plaza of Heroes, beautiful, beautiful. You love to see it. We don't even need to hit, we don't even need to take a hit from the, from the pain lands. Perfect, freaking perfect, let's go. Okay, Oppo debating on how to sequence. I have actually noticed, uh, like, I played a little bit of ladder since the rotation. I've been noticing a lot of mono red aggro. Like, a lot, a lot. Like, a shocking amount of mono red aggro. It's apparently a thing right now. Um, 
Which is fine. I mean, it's powerful for a reason. Like, I get it. Yeah, and and it's it's a good starting, you know. It's a it's a cool. I don't know. It's a cool uh, archetype to see how it, when you're looking at a, at new cards in a new format, it's interesting to kind of see like, okay, can the mono red curve be strong enough? I get I get that. All right, next turn we hit the Relic of Legends. The turn after that we can hit Joda. We would have to tap Ellis to do it, but I think that's worth it. Then after the turn after that, we can hit Retadra back and get some Cascade action, assuming we're still alive, which is a big assumption, frankly. Very big assumption. All right, they're going to blood away a mountain. Because those blood tokens aren't really doing them any good. They just need action right now. And they can't afford to attack as much as they want to. Which I get, I do. Cool. This is actually a really sweet line. So we can throw the Relic of Legends, and we can keep Cut Down up. So we can get rid of one of those Epicures, but it's an instant, so we can hold it. We can just chill with it. No attacks. End the turn. Do they have a play with fire to the face? They do not, but they also don't activate their blood token with that leftover mana. Hmm, interesting. Very interesting. I'm gonna play with fire. I don't love that, but sure. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tap Ellis for black here. Kind of. Oh, Reckless Storm Seeker. That is an excellent target to be cut down. Doink. Get it out of here. That prevented a solid three damage that turn. I will take it. Let's go. All right. So now that we don't have Ellis on board, we don't have access to um, Jota yet, which is mildly unfortunate. I'm going to hit the Path of Peril just to get those... There's two little homies off the board. Because that's additional damage. I, just, I don't want to take it. I don't feel like taking damage. What can I say? So we had to do some early control action, as you can see, to try to, you know, stave off aggression. But that's exactly what those cards are for. Having two more Path of Peril in hand feels kind of bad. I'm not going to lie. Um, Chandra, okay. She's dressed to kill. Don't love that. Definitely don't love that. Adding red mana, Dominus. They can use that red mana to activate the blood token if they don't like the card in their hand. But they choose not to. All right. Groovy. Here comes Rotadrabek of Urberg. Casual Ward 2 feels really good here. Not going to lie. I like it. I like it a lot. So next turn, we can throw a reality chip or we can actually attack with Rotadrabek because of Vigilance. Um, we can attack Chandra with Rotadrabek and then use Rotadrabek to um, go after Chandra, which is decent. Uh, they are going to target Rotadrabek. The ward is going to counter it. Let's go. All right. Come on in, welcome to my face. Land is good, I like land. So now we don't even need to tap Rotadrabic, which is nice. I am gonna go ahead and attack here. Oh, I should've played Jota first. That would've killed Chandra. I missed out on that. I, I done goofed. That was a punt. Um, Atticure Waste is gonna ping me for one if I do this, this way. Um, there we go. All right. Never didn't have it. And we can even drop reality chip right now, which, you know what, to be honest, I think I want to do. We're going to tap Joda to do it. And we don't cascade into anything because it's only a two drop. 
but we're gonna get perfect information on the top of our library and because of Joda's ability, reality ship comes into the three seven, which feels pretty rad. So, all right, we we did the thing. We have valued out here pretty hard. We're only gonna draw land here. I don't love that, but that's okay. That's all right. Keep on up ticking. Sure, sure, sure. All right, so depending on what is on the top of our library here, they're gonna hit a bloodthirsty adversary. They're gonna be able to spin it to win it. They can hit a play with fire. Do an additional two damage and put the plus one plus one counter. That actually is problematic for us. We have 17, as of right now we have 17 damage on the crackback, which isn't enough. Yeah, this is going to put us down to one. What we need here, I th think, is a Rafine. <laughs> or a way to shuffle our library, frankly. That'd be nice, too. Yeah, so if they attack with both, we need... We're, we're, the onus is on us to kill them next turn. And like, like I said, we don't have enough on the field at this moment. Well, there's Rafine. All right, we're gonna go ahead and connive with Joda. Ellis is actually really nice. I'm gonna let both paths go. That way this puts him down to a two turn clock. So Chandra's plus one can't kill us. That's important. So Chandra being off the field, we, we needed to do that. The problem with doing that particular play by getting the reality chip tucked under there. Squee. Fart. That's uh, actually. Uh, no, because it's going to create a third attacker. Doggone it. So we block here. We block here. And f the freaking one goblin gets through. So Squee. Good card. Squee's a good card. Don't sleep on Squee. <laughs> Doggone it. We did the thing too. We were so close. Oh, well. Oh, well. Let's move on to the next. Uh, we're gonna have reality chip on two. I, I like reality chip on two. I think that's gonna be fine. Reality chip on two into Rafine on three. Into potentially Urtai or Tef on four. That's, I mean, you can do a lot worse than that. Uh, we can also just cut down that stowaway right now and do not pass go and not collect $200 because we can't block it with chip anyway. So let's just do that before they have an opportunity to untap. I don't want to give them any card selection. Seems like a bad idea. Lunark, sure. Here comes Rafine. Do love hitting Rafine on time. Feels good every time. All right. So they seem to be playing some form of Bant humans is kind of the vibe I'm getting here. Um, ha! Path actually lines up really nicely here. So we can path, get rid of the suspicious stowaway and the Lunark veteran. Rafine and the extraction specialist are completely untouched. That's fun. I like that. I like fun. Fun is nice. Um, Let's attack first. Get the connive action. Uh, I'm gonna let one of these air ties go. Mm. 
Boom. Yeah, let's hit, let's hit the path. Let's just, yeah. Get, you know, solid two for one. Now, the stowaway couldn't attack or block when it's, you know, effectively under the extraction specialist, but still, like, I think uh, getting rid of it was still a worthy cause. Now, what we haven't seen, we had uh, a Johnny, what? A Johnny coming in completed. Top card is a land, they choose to keep it. Interesting. All right. I mean, opponent, you do know that Johnny's getting completely wrecked here, right? Like, that is 100% happening all day. Every day. Boom. Let's go. Um. Then we throw Tef. We get the old plus one action. No artifacts. That creature. And the Rafine's Tower. That also allows us to cast out the reality ship. Which, notably, does not have Defender, which is nice. I like that a lot, as a matter of fact. Late to rest? Ooh, okay. Whenever a human, you control Jai's draw card. Whenever a creature control the plus gain two life. Uh, do we want to kill the extraction? I think we do. Let's let him draw the card. That's fine. Doink. A 3-2 lifelinker was going to be a pain in my, uh, in my buttocks. I'm going to go ahead and down tick... Team money. Let's grab Ritadrabic. Get them online. Seems decent. Still another land on top. I don't love that. I'm gonna attack with the reality chip so we get a double connive on Rafine. Uh, I'm actually gonna hold the path and let both lands go. That's fine. All right. So we're missing a lot of land, uh, a lot of mana fixing right now, which is problematic, of course, because if we do manage to hit our, um, if we do manage to draw into Joda, if we manage to draw into Joda, we wouldn't be able to cast him. Um, our opponent was digging for something and they didn't find it. I'm not sure what happened there, but I'll take it. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next. See, see what we can do. Uh, I mean, our curve doesn't start till three here. Which is not optimal. Ooh. But we hit the path and we're gonna be able to hit it on time. Now our opponent's on blue, and that's not encouraging right now. Chance of that being a low to the ground aggro deck is not ideal, because that's definitely what our hand is kind of teed up for. Ah! Oh, I could be wrong! I could be wrong. We have an enlister, Guardian of New Banalia online. This might be an Azorius or maybe another Bant Human situation. Which I think it actually could be pretty good. I think banned humans might actually be, be pretty decent in the meta. In, in, you know, all in all. Um, caves, I suppose. Next time we throw the shipwreck marsh, hit the path, really wreck their day, which is nice. Had I played Plaza of Heroes there, we'd also be able to hit Rafine on three without having to, sh without having to ping ourselves. So maybe cave on two wasn't the right play. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, Thali makes it, it pulls the path of peril out of reach. Problem. Can't enlist because Thalia has summoning sickness. I think that's what they're, what they're looking at right now. Yep, I'm going to have to take one damage here because I missed sequenced my lands. Which... It's suboptimal, of course, but here we are. But next turn, we'll be able to throw the plots of heroes, rip the path of peril, get these two off the board, and go from there. So, we'll see. I'm hoping they double spell two drops. We're going to take... I mean, this is going to be a big hit that they're about to deliver on us. Yeah, Guardian of Nubinalia attacks. They're going to get the enlist option. They're going to be able to enlist Thalia. Yeah, there it is. Nope. Looks like this might be our opponent's first experience with Enlist. Which is fine. Actually, I've, I have yet to use Enlist myself. So, no worries. It's all good. There it is. All right. 
So you're gonna scry on. They're gonna crash in for six. It's gonna connect. I, like I'm not losing Rafine to prevent six damage to a threat that's gonna get completely, completely eradicated this next turn. So here comes Path of Peril. Let's go. So they can keep Guardian and Nubinali indestructible, which is mildly problematic, but they'd have to go down a card to do it. So we would get two cards off the field and one card off of their hand. So it's not bad. Like, you know, we could do a lot worse. Ooh, they're just gonna Fading Hope instead. They could have discarded the Fading Hope. They won't have to recast it, but whatever. It's uh, it's fine. Maybe the Scribe is relevant. Uh, all right, we're gonna go ahead and crash on in. Doink. Ooh. Ooh, that's exciting. Um, yeah, the reason that's exciting is that's a timeless lotus next turn, which is pretty tight. Uh, you know what? I'm actually just gonna let. I let the tower go. It's only gonna be one damage, but that's okay. That's okay. We drew the untapped land we need for next turn. So we stick the time to slow just the, the next turn, the turn after we get Joda and a four drop. Feels D's. Gavin Dongard, okay. They can also follow up with the champion, but they choose not to, interesting. All right. What's the ward on that one? We could actually Urtai kill Gavin Dawn Guard. Tempting. But I think I want to hit this first. Alright. No tax, let's just chill. Just hang out, guard the life total. Sit back, relax, enjoy. Reinforcements and bad feel crazy. Ah, so it's um. This is raise the alarm. This is, this is effectively a raise the alarm variant, which is okay, cool, rock on. Ooh, hello. That is a fair amount of damage that our opponent's crashing in on. Uh, we could counter that if we wanted to. No, I don't think we want to. I want to stick Joda first. I want to get greedy. I love getting greedy. It's my favorite. Faithbound Judge. All right. That's a card. Joda, the mother flipping unifier. Let's go. And I think now I think I'm going to stick Ritadrovic here and we're going to get a uh, we're going to spin the wheel. Doggone it. I wish Ritadrovic was I wish Ritadrovic was online now, because then we'd be able to get double Rafines. That would be rad, but alas, it's not to be. Um, I'm going to decline this. So it's going back in. Can't really afford to attack here. There are a lot of things that could go wrong here. A lot of things that could go wrong. All right, they whiffed on the Dawn Guard. That's good. Burdick's are going after Joda. I think we're humped. I think with that, we might be completely screwed. As a matter of fact. Um, all right, we are going to go ahead and block here. So we are going to get a Rafine token. Which is not ideal, but it'll be fine. We can then Urtai next turn to get rid of the Cathar, get our Joda back. Do we want to do that before or after? You know what? I think I want to do this. I want to stick our other Jota first. Again, go greedy. Got to go greedy sometimes.
All right, so we stick our tie, we spin the wheel of Jota. Elis, or Ellis, or Alas. Alas. Um. Your tie hits. I want to destroy the Brutal Cathar. I want my other Jota back. Doggone it. Give me my Jota. Give me, give me, give me my Jota. So now all my homies are swole, and I like that. Both have so many sickness, so straight up doesn't matter. We get a couple pings. So this is a value engine that we're that we're working with here. And it makes me hippie. Um Vigilance is a beautiful thing. I'm gonna go ahead and buff up Rafine with the connive. Uh, I'll keep one of the Alice's or Alas's or I ever pronounce it. Sick. Boom, baby. Making it happen. Yes, I'm positive. We're gonna get the double Jota triggers. However, that th this we're not gonna spin in anything because we don't have um, any one drop legends. That's fine. We just have to watch the animation go. Is what it is. But Ellis now sticks. We pick one. Doesn't straight. Doesn't matter. Trigger. 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 Gain some life. Ping some life. Get a copy. It's a zombie. Living the dream. We're doing the thing, everybody. We're doing the thing. So here we have a situation where our board just got so freaking big, so freaking fast. I absolutely love it. Yeah, and we, we got it. There's no way we don't have it. <clears throat> so, yeah. <laughs> Joda. That's Joda. That's what Joda can do. Super fun stuff. So, I gotta say, I think this deck is on to something. I think this card is incredibly powerful. I mean, we saw it here. We went from zero to a lot very, very quickly. So, I, like I said, I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear other cards that you think could work in this deck, other colors that maybe could build, be built around Joda. But this is the Esper variant, and I think it, it's solid. I think there's something here. So, thank you so much for checking out the video. Thank you for making it to the end. It means the world. I really appreciate it. I hope you are having a phenomenal day, and I will catch you on the next one.